Nuclear weapons? They're a lot like Pirates of the Caribbean movies. There's way too many of them. We certainly don't need any more. And if you actually think about what goes into making them, they're pretty scary. I mean, come on, Johnny Depp. I mean, the first one was cool, but after that, it was just a waste of everybody's time, man. But anyway, nuclear weapons have been around for more than 70 years. And despite numerous negotiations and treaties to get rid of them, they're not going away anytime soon. If you followed the news or hopped on Twitter recently, you really can't escape the feeling that nuclear war might be on the horizon. In a New Year's Day speech, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un boasted that, and I quote, the entire mainland of the U.S. is within range of our nuclear weapons, and the nuclear button is always on the desk of my office. President Trump tweeted a response that he too had a nuclear button at his desk that was much bigger. Then less than two weeks later, people in Hawaii received this emergency alert on their cell phones. It turned out to be a false alarm, but worries about a nuclear-armed North Korea are no joke. In September 2017, the country successfully detonated the largest nuclear bomb it had ever tested. The international community is no fan of North Korea having nukes. They would prefer they didn't have them at all. In fact, North Korea is one of only nine countries that has nuclear weapons. So how did we get here? Why do some countries have nuclear weapons while others don't? Before we dive in, let's hear from Joe Hansen over at It's Okay to Be Smart about why nukes are so dangerous. Nuclear weapons can unleash a level of destruction that's pretty much unmatched. Conventional bombs rely on chemistry to create explosions. The ingredients inside a conventional bomb transform one set of chemicals into another, releasing energy along the way. Nuclear weapons, however, derive their destructive power from altering the atoms themselves. These nuclear reactions can take two forms. With fission, one atom is split into two new atoms. The two bombs the US dropped on Japan in World War II were fission bombs. They killed more than 200,000 people. Fusion, on the other hand, combines two atoms into one. These hydrogen or thermonuclear bombs have the potential to be a thousand times more powerful than fission bombs. In 1961, Russia detonated a fusion bomb that was 10 times more powerful than all the conventional weapons used in World War II. But with nukes, the massive explosion and vaporizing heat blast and immense shock wave are only part of the damage. All that fusioning and fissioning also releases huge amounts of radiation. This mutates DNA, kills cells, and if it doesn't poison you immediately, may eventually lead to cancer. The destructive power of atomic weapons is so great, the clouds of ash and dust they throw into the sky may even block enough sunlight to create a so-called nuclear winter, contributing to the destruction of whole ecosystems. You can see why these are looked at as cruel bombs. It may seem crazy that we created these insanely destructive weapons at all, but when they were first being developed, it was a crazy time. Let me set the scene for you. In late 1938, just nine months before the start of World War II, scientists in Nazi Germany accidentally discovered nuclear fission. Physicists had known for about 40 years that an immense amount of energy was locked inside the atom. But here, finally, was a way to unlock it. As news of the discovery spread and World War II began, every major industrial nation raced to build their own atomic bombs. The U.S. got there first. In 1945, on a summer night in the desert of New Mexico, they tested the world's first atomic bomb. It took some of the brightest scientists of the day and over $22 billion in today's money to make it happen. Because these bombs cost so much to develop and require such advanced technology, only the richest and most powerful countries were able to make them. By the mid-1960s, that was a small club. Only the U.S., the Soviet Union, Great Britain, France, and China had nuclear weapons. But then, the Cuban Missile Crisis happened. In 1962, it looked like nuclear war might just happen. It was discovered that the Soviets had nuclear weapons in Cuba that were pointed directly at the U.S. War never happened, but the 12-day crisis that freaked out the world eventually led to the landmark Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons in 1968. The core of the treaty states that countries that have nuclear weapons will take steps to get rid of them, and countries without nuclear weapons won't try to get them. In the decades that followed, nearly every country ended up signing the treaty, with few notable exceptions, India, Pakistan, and Israel. North Korea did sign, but withdrew in 2003. All four of these countries went on to develop their own nuclear weapons. Today, it's estimated that there are approximately 15,000 nuclear weapons in existence. Now that may sound like an insanely large number, but it's actually down from a peak of 70,000 in the late 80s. Russia and the US own about 93% of all nukes. The remaining 7% is owned by just seven other countries, China, France, the UK, India, Pakistan, Israel, and North Korea. Many countries without nuclear weapons don't want them. 
They might be allies with countries that do have nukes, or maybe they're just not interested in spending a bunch of money developing and maintaining them. But for countries with nukes, it doesn't mean that they're itching to start a nuclear war anytime soon. The goal isn't to use them, instead, it's part of a larger strategy to discourage other countries from attacking them. It's called the deterrence theory, and it's been a heated topic of debate for decades. To illustrate how it works, let's look at the ultimate nuclear rivalry, the US versus Russia. Basically, a nuclear attack is so destructive that Russia would never directly attack the US because the US could respond with an attack of their own. But for this to prevent war, Russia would also need nuclear weapons so the US couldn't attack them. Since neither country could attack the other, both would be forced to use diplomacy to solve any disagreements. You know, they basically just have to talk it out. In his 2018 State of the Union address, President Trump singled out deterrence as a key reason why the US should keep its nuclear weapons. We must modernize and rebuild our nuclear arsenal, hopefully never having to use it, but making it so strong and so powerful that it will deter any acts of aggression. Supporters of the deterrence theory argue that it has kept the world safe. In the nearly 70 years that rival countries have had nuclear weapons, there's been no nuclear attacks. However, more and more critics think that the theory doesn't hold up in the modern world. The risk of an accidental launch or a terrorist group getting its hands on a nuke is way too high. Think about it. If a suicide bomber were able to get a nuclear weapon, would they really be deterred by another country that had them? If we're ever really going to be safe, these critics think we need to get rid of all nuclear weapons. Okay guys, so this is more than just another history lesson. Right now, as you're watching this video, the US is planning on spending over $1 trillion, trillion with a T, over the next 30 years to modernize their nukes and stay ahead of the game. What do you guys think about that? As always, let us know in the comments below and like and subscribe. Oh yeah, first of all, we gotta thank Joe at It's Okay To Be Smart for you know coming on and sharing all that information with us. Thank you, Joe. You're awesome. If you guys haven't checked out his show, you should do that. And uh, if you like this video, you should check out Internet Trolls because people just say mean things on the internet. And you should watch Facial Recognition because they're keeping tabs on us, guys. Remember that. Uh, stay above the noise. Till next time, guys. Bye.